streets with that name. So then well, we had to go through the process of elimination. What, uh, which ones of those streets were near the water? Which ones, you know, those were the things. And then eventually we found that house. Um, I remembered everything about that house because unlike the other children, I got to see the outsides of houses. They didn't get to see it. I wasn't born without an identity. I was born with an identity and then stolen. So that helped in a way because they had to produce me in other times when, you know, if the CPS would say, well, where's your adopted daughter? They had to show you that I was still around, you know? Yes. Um, so I got to see the outsides of houses. So when I was with the police, I actually drew houses, like the way they, how they looked to me. You know, I got a lot of things wrong, but I got enough right that we did find that house. It took a while, it took ages actually. Felt like forever before they found that house. I mean, I drove around in cars with them for days on end and then they then they put me in the safe house and they'd go look in themselves and they'd come and get me and it took it felt like forever, but apparently it was only like nine months or something before they found that house. But yes. you know, when you're a kid it feels like it's forever. A lifetime. Yeah. Oh no, it feels like forever. Every day is like forever. It's just everything went into slow motion after that. Yes, Charlie, yeah. many, many Native American children are missing. Many, many. Too many, actually. Still, yeah. And um, there's over 5,000 now that they've dug up from their residential schools. So 5,000? There's over 5,000 now. Last I heard it was 500. No, no, wow. 5,000 5, now. Um, that's why the Native Americans are fighting back and they're going and putting red paint on the churches and everything. Because, um, you know, once again, the Catholic Church is in, on the, in the spotlight, you know, for doing them things. And I'm not saying that all Catholic people are bad. I'm not saying that because I know Catholic people that are honest and not abusers of children. So I'm not criticising anybody's religion. There's bad and good in all religions. And sadly, the evil part about it is the bad people that pretend they're godly people and they're evil. That's the sad part about it. And then they make it bad for everybody else that is that religion. So, you know, like yeah. people always criticise Muslim people for their beliefs, but if they actually took the, the time to find out that Muslim people, their religion does not involve blowing up buildings and stuff. It doesn't. So it's just, it's just the militant ones of each religion that do those things it's not the actual real religion like the jewish people because i spent a lot of time in israel um i actually got baptized years later in the jordan river i had the chance to do that that was something that was really big and that's amazing you know, yeah i can share the photos of me in israel i've got heaps of them um i got to be over there for a really long time and i i I never, because I lost religion and didn't believe in God for a really long time because I used to think like every abused person thinks, if God is real, why is he letting this happen? Because that's what your mindset is as a child. You don't realise that there's good and evil and evil was what did that to me. It had nothing to do with God, you know. But as a kid, you feel like God doesn't care about you because why is this happening? So, you know, you're, you have to come back to God and that's a really hard thing to do after abuse is to find faith again. And I did, I, I did. I was in Israel and I always used to think, well, the Jewish people killed Jesus. So why are they God's people, you know? But what I got to find out by being there is that the people that hurt, um, killed Jesus and I'm, I'm there's a photo of me standing in pretty much where he was bleeding and I had no clue until I got the photo developed and my friend, the Jewish lady that I was in Israel with said, oh, that's where they, you know, with Jesus. So you're standing on his blood. And I was like, why didn't you tell me that, you know? Wow. I wouldn't have stood there. And she's like, you're right on top of the place. And, and now that I zoom in on that picture, I can see that the stones underneath my feet are different than the rest of the courtyard. So 
I was standing there right on top of where he bled. So, you know, there's just a lot of things that I experienced later on in life that were huge. And I found out that the only, the people that had him killed were the elite people in the Jewish religion. They were the rich people. The people in the villages and stuff that helped him while he was carrying that cross, they're very faith-driven people. They really do believe in Jesus, but the hierarchies of the church and the rich people don't. They or, they do make money off every um, part of Jerusalem that involves Jesus. They make a lot of money in tourism, and you, you can't always get into Israel. You really have to know somebody that knows somebody because it's kind of a dangerous place to be you know while you're walking around you go into a shopping center you have to go through metal detectors and everything just to go to a store so I got to experience all that so you know my life took some weird twists and turns as I was growing up getting older so but wow. yeah the, yeah so that's pretty much my story. If anyone wants to ask questions, I'm not afraid to answer. I was just going to ask you if you were willing to answer some questions. Anybody have any questions for Yanni? I, I want to tell you, Yanni, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. That's okay. Thank you so well, much. I'm sorry that I couldn't keep it together. I really tried, but I had the love. No, no, listen, don't apologize. It's okay. I expected there to be breaks because you told me you've only done this one other time. Yeah, and I so, only did it. The only reason I did it the other time was because two survivors went up before me and I wasn't planning on doing anything that day and I just happened to have been tuned in and two of the survivors couldn't do their story. One messed it all up and the other one just got too choked up. So I just thought, you know what? It's go time. I'm going to do it. So I went up and, and I wasn't... It wasn't structured. I didn't tell it from start to finish. I just sort of went all over the place with it because that was the first time I'd ever really spoken. So so this time I kind of started from start to finish. I mean, I can't tell every event because we'd be here for 10 hours. I mean, it's 11 years, so I can't talk about every event, but I hope I kind of, you know, we have imaginations and imagine your worst of your imagination and that's what happened in that situation. It was as bad as your imagination can do it and then times that by a, a million and that's how bad it was. So you truly are a warrior, Yoni. You really are. And you saved those babies' lives, those children that were rescued from those eight houses. You saved their lives. They have yeah. a life because of you. And that is amazing. I wish I could find them. I wish that, you know, they could find me or I could find them. But maybe they just have a different approach on what happened and they just want to forget it. A lot of people do that. So I can't forget it. I'm sure they can't forget it, but they probably try to push it away and try to have a normal life now. I, that's what I'm guessing. Hoping, actually, that they... You never know, they may be looking for you. That's true. I always, that's why I've started to talk because I thought maybe, just maybe, one of them will see it and say, oh my God, I know her, you know? I, I, that's why I started talking and started, you know, saying what happened. Because I was with different races of kids. They weren't all, like, Native kids. They weren't, they, there was Asian kids, there was blonde, blue-eyed kids, there was dark-haired kids, there was all types of body types of children, tall, thin, like thicker. Even though we didn't get fed properly, there was, there was girls that had, like little girls that were a bigger build and I was very thin. I was a really thin child and some of them weren't and I don't know how that happened now that I'm looking back because we didn't get fed properly, so... I don't know how people were bigger in a way when I look back, but anyway, it's probably just their body type and that's probably what they had for the rest of their life or they just were really tall, big people. I don't know. Let me read you this comment. Not only did you save the children that were rescued, but the future children that would have been brought in. She's right. You saved a lot of children from those people. Yeah. Also... Jen would like to know, did you ever hear children tell about an angel or Jesus visiting them while they were in captivity? No. Um, 
actually one did one said that she saw a weird light she said oh last night when I was sleeping and I opened my eyes and I saw this light above me and I was like okay that's a that's I think she was the only one that ever said that that's an interesting question no I didn't hear anybody say that but you know what I wasn't around while they were taking their last breath some of them so maybe they did in that moment you know see the light that's what well I'm hoping that's what happened well they were innocent children so I'm sure the ones that did not make it are in heaven right oh, now for sure for sure they're just little babies they didn't you know some of them couldn't even speak, you know, like some of them could too. My dogs are so naughty sometimes. But I've it's got okay, a I have animals I've myself. Got a neighbor, I got a neighbor that's a real creep. And um, my husband, when he's away at work and stuff, he's he's like, he got, my dog's like 70 kilos. He's a bull mastiff. Wow. But my little tiny staffy, she's about 30. She's the one that will rip somebody apart. He's probably kissed them to death. He's just a sort, but she's real feisty. She'll attack, but he feels like I'm safe when I have the dogs around. So, you know, he, he worries about my neighbor because look, the neighbor's an old man. I'm not afraid of him, but he does like creepy stuff. And I do suspect he was a S A L S offender, you know, S offender. Um, oh my. Oh yeah, he's, he's he said something to my daughter one time, and I was going to kill him. She was only like fourteen years old, and he said something really like about you know s to her, and she came in and told me, and I ran out there, and ever since me and him have been at war, but he flashed himself at me and stuff. So, so he's a real creep then. He's a real creep, but he's really old, and if he came near me, I'd knock him out in one hit. So, I'm not that scared, you know. He probably was scary when he was younger because he's definitely a sick person. But now, I mean, he can try it. I'd probably he'd probably be in a stretch. I'd probably rip him apart. So, but yeah, he flashes me and you know, he licks his lips. He's a real creep. And my husband's six foot two, and he's a uh, he's a personal trainer, so he's a bodybuilder, and he's all muscly and stuff. He's got big, big muscles, <laughs> so I don't know why he would want to, you know, I have to stop my husband because my husband, I don't want him to get arrested and they'll send him back to the United States and he'll never be able to come here. So I have to stop him from ripping him apart. So. Thank you, Dr. Light. And ignore the cash app. It's a copy and paste thing. Please what don't. I was talking to the audience because I put my email and stuff out there. Just a moment. What was that? Uh, someone, I can't read that message. I can see it, but I, my TV is off. So it, I says, please, it says, please don't be alone in your thoughts after the stream, Yoni. DID can put us in a bad state, Darlene. Yeah, I know. Well, um, I had a friend that was very badly DID and, you know, she actually would change personalities in front of me and she, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a taboo and it's a no-no to say this as a survivor. Hold on a minute. Her... It's okay. Her abuse was worse than mine. And you're not allowed to say that as a survivor. Yeah, it's a no-no, but she she had um, dissociative disorder so bad that she would change personalities and I would watch her do that change from a little girl to a man and it was it was a really like freakish thing I never did any of that I just would get dark in my thoughts I um don't have multiple personality or DID I just um I just have dark I'm thoughts. Your I just have dark thoughts, you know, where I feel like I need to save everybody and, and it really annoys me that I can't and I really feel helpless and that makes me really sad. Um, My aunt told me a story. She had a neighbor who would stick his thing through the knot hole in a wooden fence. 
she took a butcher knife and cut it off. Oh my God. She said, wow. man ran away and never saw him again. Well, I hope he ran away. Believe me, I'd love to do that to my neighbor. I'd love it. I can't stand him. I would, oh, he's horrible. And for me, it's worse because I know what kind of person he is. He wasn't an elite. He wouldn't have been, you know, buying kids. He probably just preyed on his friend's kids and stuff, which would have been disgusting. But that's the type of predator he was. He was an opportunistic predator. You know, these elites that buy these babies for their perverted, sick things, they never get in trouble. And that kills me to this day, that they never get in trouble. They only blame the handlers, and I blame both. I think they're both just as bad. Somebody that pays money to do that to a child should be in jail as well. Yes, I agree. Yanni, yeah. you are a beautiful soul. Yanni, these are for you, roses and hearts. Oh, thank you. She said she did not know what happened to the man, whether he went to a hospital or went and bled out somewhere or what. Oh, my God. I, I will reserve my comment because I, yeah, hopefully bled out somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, don't be I sorry. don't have any sympathy for people like that. I really don't. Death is actually too good for them, in my opinion. Now, I don't know if you feel like this, but I think if they go to prison, they should have um, pictures of their victims put in their rooms or in their cells posted yeah. to where they can't take them down. So they have to look at what they did every day. Yeah, that would be a good. That, I don't, you know what? But then again, they're very heartless, so they probably won't care. They'll probably get off on it because they're sick. But you know well, what, the handlers, the handlers didn't engage in SA. Well, not where, I, I never seen that happen. I seen them kick and hit and, you know, even I seen them punch a little kid. You know, I seen that, but they weren't the abusers. They were just the people that took them. You know, they, they're just as bad. They should rot in jail too. But the, the most charge that one of them got was 20 years. So that's- They should have been put under the prison. I agree, it's not enough. 20 years is not enough time for taking children to be abused three and four nights a week. No, they should have been in jail for the rest of their lives. But as you see in the legal system, when it comes to this, they usually don't get a long sentence. 20 years is not enough. No, it's not enough. Did they take a plea deal or is that what they gave them after the trial? Um, I don't know if they took a plea deal because I can't, I wasn't old enough to understand. Um, I, I, you know, occasionally I read through the transcripts and I see things and I'm old enough to digest that now. But back then I didn't know, but I do remember one of them getting 20 years. Whether they took a plea deal or not, I, I wasn't old enough to know that. Or well, did you that. did you go through the whole trial or you Three. know was it all, okay Three. so yeah you went through the whole trial so then they did not take a plea deal that's what the, they were given oh okay. See, I don't understand any of that I do remember um some of them got sentenced quickly so they probably did but the main you know the main offenders like the people that were in charge of the others um the one that I that was really cruel. He's the one that got 20 years. And I still remember thinking 20 years, he's gonna be old, young enough to be having another life, you know, that's not enough. I, you know what, I used to walk down the street and I was always afraid that I was gonna bump into them. I was always looking over my shoulder, looking at people, I was always suspicious and I'm not that anymore. Now I'm, I'm in a more ruthless, state where if they if I run into that I'd probably knock them the F out. I probably would hit them. I'd probably get arrested because I'd probably attack them. I don't know. Well you know, when I worked for the wealthy elites, you know, the ones that I went to Israel with and stuff, I did see people that I kind of thought, I think I know you. You know what I mean? But there's nothing I could do because my job I worked for a millionaire and that's why I ended up in Israel. Um, 
I went all over the world with her. That was my job. I was her personal assistant. So I went all around the place with her, mostly to Israel. Um, and um, I, do, I do remember being at her Friday dinners, and it's called Sabbath, and they would be, you know, a big table full of people. And I remember looking at certain people and thinking they looked familiar. But there wasn't much I could do about it. Jen says, we'll bail you out. <laughs> it's okay, we'll bail you out. <laughs> bail me out. I probably would. You know what? I think if I was in a public place and some, one of them came towards me, I probably would fight. And I probably would be arrested because, yeah, I'd be arrested, not them. So maybe the police would be soft on me when I told them why. I don't know. Yanni is in her 40s, she said, and are your children grown? They want to know if your babies are grown. My, I have a son that's married, and I have one that's a federal police officer. And my, awesome. daughter's, my daughter's 20. She's just gone through cancer. Um, she's had two surgeries in the last month. And um, hopefully, because we haven't heard any, the first operation she had to remove it from her cervix was unsuccessful. Um, the second surgery she's had, we haven't heard anything, so maybe it was successful, but we're just waiting right now. And it was only um, stage one, so if they can get it out now, that'll be it'll be over. So we're hoping that that will happen and she'll just go on. And I had cervical cancer stage three. Um, I had to do chemo for many years, but I survived it, so I don't really dwell on that. Um, I beat it, but. So, you know, I'm not, and I'm just hoping that my daughter will too, because um, because of my abuse. So this is the sad thing about it, though, because of the abuse that I got, I had the HPV antibodies inside my body. Um, those are what cause you to have cervical cancer. So one of those dirty monsters had infected me with HPV. Yes. And because I had it, and my and I passed it on to my daughter. And that's why she's had cancer now. It's hereditary, apparently. Yeah, I can be. Yeah, so she's just gone through it. But hopefully they got it, got it this time and she'll just go on and have a normal life. If I could go on and have a normal life after stage three in chemo, she can certainly beat stage one, you know? That's yes, ma'am. She's a bodybuilder. She's like my, she's like her dad. She, she's a big bodybuilder. She's on my page. I've got, oh, my dog is, I'm, I think I'm, I'm getting a delivery. That's why they do that. Because I, I run a um, business and we get deliveries all day. That's yeah. why they're barking. Because every time the delivery man comes, they're telling me the delivery man is there. So... Anyway, so like I said, my daughter, hopefully we haven't heard anything from the second surgery. So no no news is good news, I guess. Because well, maybe they got it all. The first okay. operation, well, the first operation they called within a few days and told her it was unsuccessful. And the, the second surgery she had last week and we still haven't heard anything. So hopefully that means it's gone, but we're just waiting to find out now. That's that's awesome. Well, um, do, do you know how upsetting that is to know that one of those creeps infected me and I infected my daughter? Do you know how scary and how upset that makes me? Like, I I bet it does, and oh, I and I pray that she wild. <laughs> that she wild. is. Can you tell us a little bit about parenting after you found out what happened and you were able to have children after the?